okay good afternoon everyone we are from group two and we are going to discuss about personal planning and recruiting next So here are the table of contents. So there are six learning objectives that we are going to discuss. The first one is workforce planning and forecasting. We are going to explain the main techniques used in employment planning and forecasting. And then the second one is why effective recruiting is important. So we are going to explain and give examples for the need for effective recruiting. And then the third one is internal sources of candidates. And then next. And then the fourth one, we are going to discuss about the outside sources of candidates. The fifth one is the recruiting a more diverse workforce. And the last one is developing and using application forms. So the first one, we'll talk about recruiting and selecting process. The first one, we need to work forces, personal planning and forecasting. And then there's recruiting and internal or external candidates. And then there's applicants complete application forms. The fourth one of the process is they use selection tools like tests to screen out most applicants. And the last one, they decide uh, where supervisors or others do a final interview with the candidates. Workforce planning and forecasting is the process of deciding what positions the firm will have to fill and how to fill them. Strategy and workforce planning is better than the firm's strategic and business planning. Employment plans are built on forecasts or basic assumptions about the future. So forecasting personal needs or labor demand, there are a few basic tools for projecting personal needs. The first one is trend analysis, where a study of firm past employment needs over a period of years to predict future needs. And then there's also ratio analysis, where a forecasting technique for determining future staff needs by using ratio between, ratios between, for example, sales volume and number of employees needed. And then the third one, there's a scatter plot, a graphical method used to help identity the relationship between two variables. The next slide, I will present the examples. So the example for trend analysis is like computing the number of employees at the end of each of last five years in each subgroup, like sales, production, secretarial, and administrative. And then for ratio analysis, the example is, so we assume a salesperson traditionally generates $250,000 in sales. If sales revenue to sales people per ratio remains the same, you will require three new sales people next year, each produce an extra $250,000. And then uh, they were hoped for an extra $750,000 in sales for the next um, particular time. And then uh, for the example of scatter plot, it's a bit difficult, I think. It's, uh, for example, assume a 500 bed hospital expect to expand to 1,200 beds over the next five years. The HR director wants to forecast how many registered nurses the hospital will need. They will determine the relationship between hospital size and number of beds and number of nurses required. She calls eight hospitals of the various sites to find this. So as you know, there's a size of a hospital, number of beds and number of registered nurses. This is like, for example, 200, 300 and 400 size of hospital beds. And then the last one is 900 size of hospital beds and number of registered nurses for 860. If you carefully draw in a line to minimize the distance between the line and each one of the plotted points, you will be able to estimate the number of nurses needed for each hospital size. Thus, for a 1,200 bed hospital, uh, which they expected to expand, the human resource director will assume she needs 1,210 uh, nurses. Uh, here are the graphs that is um, describing and explaining um, the scatter plot. And then there's also forecasting personal needs, labor demand for managerial judgment. 
it is uh, needed to adjust the forecast to modify initial forecast of personal requirements. For example, upgrading quality or enter new markets. And then we, uh, we also have forecasting the supply of inside candidates. The manager must forecast the supply or availability of inside and outside candidates, starting from inside candidates that are qualified or trainable, can be found by, for example, personal skills inventory and development record forms or personal uh, replacement charts. Uh, the personal replacement charts is, as uh, shown decided show the present performance and promotability for positions potential replacements big firms usually use software systems such as perceptive so as you can see from uh, this figure it's like the personal replacement chart whereas uh, one can be promoted to a higher job and then there's forecasting the supply of inside candidates uh, using Markov analysis. Employer also use this mathematical process to forecast availability of internal job candidates. It involves a matrix that shows the probabilities that employees in the chain of feeder positions for a key job will move from positions to positions and be available to be filled in. Forecasting the supply of outside candidates is the availability depends first on the manager's own sense what's happening in his or her industry and local. They observe the labor market analysis to uh, search for a supply of outside candidates. And then uh, the first one, predictive workforce monitoring. It is a workforce planning often involves paying continuous attention to workforce planning issues Managers call this predictive workforce monitoring. And then there's also matching projected labor supply and labor demand. Workforce planning should logically culminate in workforce plan and lays on employers' projected workforce and skill gaps, as well as staffing plans for filling these gaps. And then there's succession planning, the ongoing process of systematically identifying, assessing, developing organizational leadership to enhance the performance. Okay, so the next learning objectives, I will explain why effective recruiting is important. So next. So why is it important? So finding the right employee in the right time and in the right place. Employer recruiting itself means finding and or attracting applicants for the employer's open positions. So for instance, if there are only two candidates apply for two openings, you may have little choice but to hire them. But what if there are 20 or more applicants? It is obvious that we should conduct an interview or test to analyze which one is the best. And finding the best is not that easy. Thus, effective recruitment is important in order to avoid the loss of customers and skill shortages as the risk facing businesses today revert to the loads of London Risk Index. Next. So here is the recruiting yield Pyramid. So it is the historical arithmetic relationship between recruitment leads and invitees, invitees and interviews, interviews and overs made and overs made and overs accepted. So uh, the pyramid shows that the ratio of overs made to actual new hires is two to one. And then the ratio of candidates interviews to over mates is three to one. And then the ratio of candidates invited or interviews to candidates interviewed is about four to three. Finally, the firm knows that of six leads that come in from all its recruiting sources, it typically invited only one applicant for an interview, a six to one ratio. Therefore, the firm must generate about 1,200 leads to be able to invite in 200 viable candidates, of which it interviews about 150 and so on. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Ang Adlan Tritawati and now I'm going to present about the uh, the next topic. Uh, it is the internal sources of candidates. Uh, we can also define it as uh, hiring people from within the organization or um, as in, uh, it is it can be also defined as seeking applicants for the job positions from those who are currently employed with the firm. Next.
So uh, these are the advantages from hiring people uh, within uh, the internal of the firm. The first one is there is no substitute. Uh, there is no substitute uh, for knowing a candidate's strength or weakness. Uh, the second one is uh, they will be more committed as they are aware of the objectives uh, of the company and they also understand the value and goals of the job. Um, the uh, the third one is moral and engagement. So the employee's moral will rise, and as they see uh, promotions as rewards for loyalty and competence. So generally, every employee uh, expects promotions to a higher post, carrying more status and pay. Uh, it will also build a culture of trust and increase uh, engagement of the firm. Uh, the fourth one is a uh, lower salaries and self development. So with uh, self-development, they will have a visual growth of the company. Uh, so because it uh, because an external can be more costly, as they have access more from the other companies. So if we hire from internals, uh, it encourages self-development among the employees as they can look forward to uh, occupy higher promotions uh, rather than paying high salaries to externals. And the fifth one is post-opening could be uh, time time consuming for the uh, company because uh, getting applicants could be a waste of time since they already know whom they want to hire from uh, the internal. Next. So uh, these are the choices if you want to go external or uh, promote from the internal. So you could go uh, outside or pick from the uh, externals if uh, the first one is if there, if your company needs special skills that aren't available uh, in your company right now. And the second one, if the company is facing an uh, adequate skill inventory system. And the third one is if they need new ideas or better techniques to bring the organization. And the fourth one, uh, need help in the human resources mix as the new persons with varied experience and talent will upgrade the HR mix. And the fifth one is uh, the company is sure of uh, their long interest of the organization. And you can also uh, promote from within or um, recruit from the internals. If the first one, if you are, if their company is striving and have and have the effective succession planning, uh, the second one is uh, have appropriate skills in the inventory system. The third one is um, your company is perfectly complete their needed skills internally. And the fourth one is uh, their goal is to have a unique and strong company culture. Next. So these are the steps to find internal candidates. The first one is job posting. So what is job postings? Uh, it is basically a public a public casing the open job to employees, whether in the bulletin boards or it could also be in the company intranets. So internal job postings is uh, writing an internal internal job uh, advertisement, which the company will list the requirements and job duties. Uh, so internal job postings includes uh, job attributes, qualifications, supervisor, work schedule, and pay rate. And the next one is emphasize the benefits. So make sure that your employees are interested in the jobs uh, they are uh, posting. And so uh, give them reasons why they need uh, they need it and eager to move from their current duties or jobs. And the third one is to give details. It is important to describe completely and uh, precisely about the details and requirement process while ensuring it is simple and easy to follow for the candidates. And the fourth one is to be aware of internal politics because it may be unfair and suboptimal for the um, internal from the internal for the internal candidates next yes yay okay next is outside sources of candidates since employers can't get employees they need from their current staff employers will look at other sources firms use to find outside candidates next Okay, first there is informal recruiting and the hidden job market. It estimates that half of all positions are filled informally or without recruiting. 
one survey found that 28% of those surveyed found their most recent job through word of mouth and 19% from online job boards, 16% direct approaches, 7% from print, print ad, and 1% from social media sites, although the 22% used uh, sites links such as LinkedIn. And next, recruiting via the internet. Online recruiting is getting more sophisticated. One example is the virtual office tour, 56 in China, the local office of accountants Deloitte. Limited posted a virtual office tour on Weibo. It is similar to Twitter's messaging service. And dot jobs. It domains gives job seekers a one-click conduit for finding jobs at the employees who registers at gotojobs.com. For example, applicants seeking a job at Disneyland can go to www.disneyland.jobs. And third is improving performance through HRIS. As one example, a bank uses its ATS. ATS are online system that helps employers attract, gather, screen, compile, and manage applicants. It is to bump applicants who don't meet the basic job requirements. It then emails them, suggesting they review the bank site for more appropriate positions. Next is advertising. It is used to, it is used such help wanted at successfully employers should address two issues, the advertising medium and the ads constructions. First, the media. It is the best medium, like the local, the local papers such as the Wall Street Journal, The Economist. For instance, depends on the position for which you're recruiting. For example, the local newspaper is often a good source for local blue The local newspaper is often a good source for local blue collar help clerical employees and lower level administrative employees The Wall Street Journal, journal can be good sources of middle or senior management personnel Second constructing the ad experienced advertisers use the guide AIDA attention, interest, desire, action to construct ads. And next is employment agencies. There are three main types of employment agencies. First, there are public ag agencies, non-profit agencies, and private agencies. The public and non-profit agencies get support from U.S. Department of Labor through grants and through other assistance such as Nationwide's Computerized Job Bank. As in for private agencies, they charge fees for each applicant they place. Next. Then recruitment process outsources. It is a special vendors that handle all or most of an employee's recruiting needs. Temporary workers and alternative staffing. It's also called as part-time or just in-time workers. In the recent recession, about 26% of all jobs private sector employees added were temporary positions. Two or three times comparable figures for as last two recessions because the contingent worker workforce isn't limited to clerical or maintenance staff. Next. When company want to recruit employees, you have to know your employment law. The employer's liability depends on the degree to which its supervisors control the temp employee's activities. Therefore, the more the agency does, the better. For example, have the agencies handle training, let it negotiate and set the pay rates and vacation or time of policies. Uh, in this case, like the federal agents rounded up about 250 illegal contract cleaning workers in 60 Walmart stores. The rate underscores the need to understand the status of the contract employees who work on your premises handling, handling activities like security or after-hours store cleaning. Next. Offshoring and outsourcing jobs. Outsourcing means having outside vendor supply services such as benefits, manage, benefits management, market research, or manufacturing. Then that the company's own employees previously did in-house. 
Offshoring means having outside vendors or employees abroad supply services that the company's own employees previously did in-house. The example for outsourcing is GE's transportation division shifted some mid-level drafting jobs from Pennsylvania to India and for the offshoring is rising wages in China and India, coupled with reputational issues and a desire to invest more in local communities. In executive recruiters, they have internal recruiting to bring more management recruiting in the house. And referrals and walk-ins. For referrals, employer posts announcement of openings and requests for referrals on its web website. And for walk-ins, for our hourly workers, walk-ins, direct applications made at your office are a big source of applicants. Example for referral is at a healthcare giant Kaiser Permanent, referring someone for one of its award eligible positions can produce bonuses of $3,000 or more. And on demand recruitings are recruiters who are paid by the hour or project instead of a percentage fee to support a specific project. For example, for on demand recruiting service is when the human resource manager for a biotech firm had to hire several do dozen people with scientific degrees and experience in pharmaceuticals, she used an ODRS firm. And college recruiting, it is sending an employer representatives to college campuses to pre-screen applicants and create an applicant pool from the graduating class. A study shows several years ago that college recruiting, for instance, that new college graduates filled about 38% of all externally filled jobs required requiring a college degree and internships can be win-win situations for students they can mean honing business skills learning more about potential employees and discovering one's career like and dislikes then telecommuters and military personnel telecommuters uh, is do all all or most of their work remotely often from home using information technology for example JetBlue Airways it uses uh, at-home agents to handle its reservation needs. This JetBlue employee, or as you can call the crew members, live in the Salt Lake City area and work out of their homes. They use JetBlue supply computers and technology and receive JetBlue training. And for the military personnel, it, it provides an excellent source of trained and disciplined recruits. For example, the unemployment rate for veterans of the Second Gulf War was about 10% versus 6.4% for non-veterans not too long ago. To help remedy this, the federal governments offered tax credits to employers who hire veterans and many employers, including Walmart, have special programs to recruit veterans. 133, the military has also programs to facilitate soldiers finding jobs. So hello everybody, moving on to the next topic, which is learning objective five, talking about recruiting a more diverse workforce. So in this chapter is we're gonna talk about the special steps on recruiting people. Given the rise in minority, older people, and women candidates. So the verse, eh, Sorry, the first diversity in a workplace is by recruiting women. The most effective way to recruit women is by a top management driven strategy. Because the overall aim is to make it clear that the employer is the sort of place in which women want to work. And the details of any such plan need, don't need to be complicated. Emphasize the effectiveness of the employer's mentoring program in moving women up. But if employer does this, of course, uh, many women will be attracted. And lastly, make sure benefits cover matters such as family planning, parental care maintain a zero tolerance sexual harassment policy 
And of course, and by that, you can recruit a woman. Moving on is recruiting single parents. Recently, there were about 10 million single parent families with children under 18 maintained by the mother. And this mother is employed, which is very, very uneasy for a parent. Being a single parent isn't easy, and recruiting and keeping them requires understanding the problem they face. So, the first step in attracting and keeping single. Parents is to make the workplace a user-friendly. And lastly, many firms has, have created flex time programs that provide employees some scheduled flexibilities. <clears throat> In this case, single parents. Such an uh, example is such as a one hour window at the beginning or at the end of the day. However, this scheduled flexibility does not affect the psychological thinking of a parent. Maybe they will still be stressed out or they'll have problems that that these uh, schedule flexibility won't affect them. <clears throat> Moving on to older workers. So older workers are actually one of the uh, one of the groups that are the fastest growing labor force. And those are from 45 to 64 years old. Older workers tend to have lower absenteeism rates and they have more reliability and better work habits than younger persons or younger workers. And it's because their experience on these uh, types of environment. And moving on to the most effective advertisement here is to emphasize schedule flexibility and accentuate the firm's equal opportunity employment statement by not giving retirees opportunities to transfer their knowledge. Moving on, but recruiting minorities. <clears throat> Being a minority means uh, makes us feel being left out or yeah because maybe the culture is different what well, the skin is different and etc that is why understanding the barriers is very important for minorities and after recognizing their barriers one turns to formulating formulating plans for remedying them and for attracting and retaining minorities and women. So these uh, plan formulation uh, may include, for instance, basic skill training, flexible work options, role models, and redesign jobs. And finally, after you plan, then you implement these plans. For example, Many job seekers check with friends or relatives when job hunting. So encourage your minority employees to assist in your uh, recruitment efforts makes sense. And lastly, we're gonna talk about the disabled. Employees with disabilities are capable workers. And it is already shown in the United States that most of the virtual based company are filled with disabled workers and it turns out to be productive because they still use their common sense to work the u.s department of labor's office of disability employment 
offers several programs, including one that help link the disabled college undergraduate who are looking for summer internships with potential employers. So these are my parts. Moving on to the next one. Okay, so hello, my name is Anissa, and the last but not least, I'm going to explain to you about the developing and using application forms. Next, please. So before we know how to develop and using the application form, we need to know what is the application form itself. So the application form is the form that provides information on education, prior work records and skills to apply to a company us as a future employee or as the job applicants, we need to fill in the form that provides information about our education, prior work records and skills as stated before. Next, please. So what information does the application form provide? The first one is the substantive information. It is the whether the applicant has the education and experience to do the job. Of course, if we apply to to a company, we can't just apply to a random company without having a few or minor experience. We have to be experienced enough so that the employer will employ us as the future employee. The next one is the previous progress and growth. So uh, as before, the employer wants to know about our experience and they also need to know about, the, about our progress and growth. Uh, the HR can draw conclu conclusions about the applicant's pre previous progress and growth, especially important for the management candidates. And the next one, the applicants can, eh, the HR can know about the applicant's stability. So the HR can draw tentative conclusions about the applicant's stability based on their previous work record. And the last one is the prediction. The HR can predict the future employee or the job applicants by seeing their application forms. Okay, next please. There are some interesting facts that you should know about uh, applying to a job. So about 40 until 70% applicants exaggerate their qualifications range. Why? Because many people think that impressive resumes, impressive application forms will result in their in they being employed. In fact, it is not always that way. So, uh, in apply uh, in applying and filling the application form, we need to give uh, true information because uh, if we give out false inf information, almost every court will support the discharge for false information. Uh, we also need to put the investigation of credit and employment and driving record, a medical examination, a drug screening test. Uh, all of them are required. And if the if the employees falsify the statements, it will be cause for a dismissal. And the last thing you should know is that some firms no longer ask for resumes. Instead, they request for applicants' links and our Twitter account. For our students, I think it is a most uh, required for us to have things and so we can put our CVs, our experience, so the HR themselves can check on the web itself. Okay, next please. Okay, so this is the example of a job application form. Uh, you can see for them for yourself, you can put your name, you can put your birth date and many more informations that the human resource department might find important before they interview you. Next please. So there are uh, pro problematical items the human resource department should avoid asking according to the EEO laws. The first thing we need to know, the EEO law is the Equal Employment Opportunity, which prohibits specific types of job discrimination in certain workplaces. The first one is education. Why? Because a question on dates of attendance and graduation is a potential violation since it may reveal the applicant's age. And the next one is arrest record. Why? Because the employers can violate the title VII by disqualifying employees because of an arrest, their previous arrest. It has an adver because it has an adverse effect on minorities. 
And the next one is present to notify in case of emergency. Actually, it is legally required for the company to ask for the applicants to fill in the present to notify in case of the emergency. The thing they do not legally require is the reason why the person is notified in case of emergency. The next one is membership and organization. Membership is actually generally legal, legally a right, but there should be further information not to include organization that reveals race, religion, physical handicaps, marital status, and etc. that might lead to discrimination. The next one is physical handicaps. I think it is clear to all of us that it is not very legal to ask for our physical handicaps because unless the physical handicaps my the physical handicaps my may re interfere with the applicant's job of for in performance i'm sorry uh, and also asking for the workers compensation is not all right and the next one is marital status i think it is clear that asking for an employee's marital status is it does not have it does not have any correlation. It may not interfere with the job. And the next one is housing. Asking whether an applicant owns, res, rents, or leases a house may be discriminatory. It can adversely affect minority groups, and it is difficult to justify on business necessity. So in short, it is not actually very necessary for the employer to ask for the applicant's housing. The last one is video resumes. It may result in physical race or religion discrimination. So if some company actually asks for video resumes, but with the physical appearing on the screen, if the applicants are unemployed, they might ask and they might protest because they think that there might be a discrimination scene on the way they talk or on the way they bring themselves to the table and it is not actually all right to ask according to the EEO laws. Next, please. So the question is, can employers predict by using job application form? The answer is yes, totally yes. In one study, the researchers found that applicants who had longer tenure with previous employers were less likely, were less likely to quit. And they also had higher performance within six months after hire. For example, uh, if an applicant quit a job without giving notice, HR can predict that they are irresponsible and they are actually, then they might be unsuccessful on the job. But maybe if the applicants graduated from college with a good degree, with a good GPA, maybe the HR can predict that the applicant is qualified enough for the job. As an HR, uh, we have to avoid race, age, gender, according to the EEO law, as I stated before. HR also have to avoid invasive questions such as birth order or how many people you date in high school because it, it, it does not have any correlation with the job itself. Next, please. Okay, so the last thing we can talk about this topic is the mandatory arbitration. So many employees, many employers are aware of the high cost of employment litigation. Uh, so they require applicants to agree on their applications to mandatory arbitration when a conflict arises. However, this mandatory arbitration has two warnings, has two things to consider. The first one, it must be a fair process. So the arbitration, so the employers can actually are the employers cannot actually act arbitrarily. They have to be fair, they have to use simple wording, and many more. They have many more uh, regulations. And the last one, mandatory arbitration, turns some candidates off. So uh, in one study, 389 MBA students read simulated employment brochures and this mandatory arbitration had a significantly negative impact on the attractiveness of the company as a place to work. So not many applicants want to apply for their job in the company since they think that the mandatory arbitration is not beneficial for them. Okay, that is all for us. Uh, next slide, please. So...
Thank you for the attention. If you have any question, please ask us during the class. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Eh, ini siapa yang itu? Ini udah kelar kan? Nah. Ini